match on table one is the final of the main event. John Chipperfield, Tim Anderson. John Chipperfield, Tim Anderson on table one. James, top table, Cat James. Good morning everyone and welcome to the action. Uh, this is the last day of the final event, the last day here. And uh, this is the World Rules Pool Tour Event 5. We've played five events. We've been to Blackpool, to London, and to Daventry. And this is how it winds up, the main event between Sean Chipperfield and Clint Ianson. Great to have you all on board, welcome, and uh, also great to have Mark Shepherd on commentary with me. Morning, Mark. Morning. It's hard to believe it. it was a few short months ago we were in Blackpool for the start of this season, and as you say, this is the finale, and a pretty pretty fitting finale. Clint Ianson has reached one final already, where he came against a pretty unstoppable Jack Whelan. Sean Chipperfield's had a great season. This would really be the icing on the cake for both of them. So... A race to eight. Be really interesting to um, to hear your predictions. Um, all you guys watching at home, where do you think this one's going to go? Um, what about you, Mark? Who's, the, who's your fancy for this one? Well, I think I'd probably go slightly with Chippy. He's, he just seems to have been knocking on the door. I mean, actually, as has Clint, but Chippy just seems to have been so consistent this season, just knocking on the door of, of a big one. I think he'll be pretty motivated to get over the line in the final one of the season. Yeah, it would be. I mean, Clint's uh, won a title this season already, and he would be a very deserved winner of a of this one as well. But uh, from a personal perspective, I think 
I'd like to see Chipper get across the line just because I think um, he's just had such a consistent season um, without any real, well, without any hardware to show for it. Nothing in the trophy cabinet. That said, it was a pretty big performance from Clint last night against Declan Brennan. Decky kind of ran out of steam a bit at the end, but Clint did what he needed to in that match. And uh, the break could feature quite heavily in this one. We saw um, Sean Chipperfield play really well in the last event right here in this uh, very arena. And he got to the final against Gareth Hibbert and his break let him down a little bit. But um, he does have a monster break. Uh, Clint Ianson, he was struggling a touch yesterday, probably relying initially on uh, the cut break and then go into the front ball break because the cut break wasn't working for him so it'll be interesting to see what he does with his break yeah i think particularly for chippy the break is very important we know how devastating he is if he can get the balls open get in there first he can quickly get four or five frames ahead of you without you doing much but if he's struggling with the break it's going to be a long afternoon for him so not many better sights in pool than watching Sean Chipperfield in full flow. We will um, probably apologise now that we'll probably just have to keep our voices down a little. Um, there is still some action around the arena, so it's not perfectly quiet, but we're not too far away from the table, so we try that the players won't overhear us while we're talking. And we don't put them off. So yeah, I think right. Maybe put them off more than hearing our useful advice. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, pretty much what we've come to expect from Sean. Quick first frame on the board. Best of 15 this match. Now we've got to the final stages up until the quarterfinals. First to seven, and semis and final first to eight. This final held over from last night. Ideally, we try and bring you complete coverage on a Saturday night, but as those that were watching will have noticed, it had got pretty late. One of the quarterfinals was a couple of hours late getting started, so that kind of pushed the schedule back a bit. It's given both players a chance to regroup. I know you were talking to Clint in the interview after the match. He was saying he was looking forward to a night's sleep. He'd had a pretty long day of it yesterday. Yeah, I was just thinking that myself. I wonder whether that's going to factor in this final. Um, obviously, both players, I think, will benefit from the fact that we didn't play the final yesterday. I think uh, both would have been feeling jaded after the uh, full day. But the day was a little busier for Clint. I think um, he just went a little bit further in the Jason Owen Open, and it was a late finish last night. It was around midnight when he finished his um, semi-final match against Declan Brennan. By then, I think Chippy had already been finished for a couple of hours. So I think, I don't know. I mean, it's a later start today. Obviously, the extra hour will probably ho help both of them. Incidentally, uh, if anyone didn't realize the clocks have gone back last night, so <laughs> I hope uh, we haven't had people tuned in for the last uh, hour waiting for us to come live thinking we're late so. yeah I feel like it's a bit easier these days you think like your phone changed themselves I was just looking at my my old fashioned watch on my wrist before this match realising I was an hour out but I, I had turned up at the right time at least. it's also quite nice for the players to have a bit of a break overnight just to look forward to this like the trouble when you go straight through the day is the, the final sort of on you and over and Whoever loses hasn't really had a chance to even celebrate getting to that point. At least they had a few hours to reflect on a good day's play and look forward to this final. Looks like Sean is well refreshed and up for the challenge. Yeah, Clint, uh, his lasting memory of... Uh the final down in London would have been an 8 0 defeat against Jack Whelan. I'm sure he won't want to be reminded of that, but uh, he'll want to make sure that 
he doesn't let Sean get away in this one because Sean looks on pretty hot form at the moment. Yeah, I mean, if you just heard that 8 0 scoreline, you'd be forgiven for thinking that maybe he'd embarrassed himself in the final, but I mean, it really wasn't like that. Jack Whelan was just unstoppable that weekend. Nobody was having any luck reining him in. His break was amazing, his passing was amazing. This one's just got away. Yeah, that was a loose positional shot. And that is something you occasionally see from Chippy when you play at this pace. Just occasionally slips out of position. So he can still clip this ball in, but he's looking at where the black's going to go. He doesn't want to be knocking that towards the middle pocket. Yeah, this could quite easily go wrong. So he's got a couple of options. He can clip the one into the middle pocket and try and hold mid-table on the on the yellow, but that would leave a really thin cut and probably no shot on the on the eight ball. So yeah, he just had to plot the course of the eight ball, and he navigates that really well. That's could have gone very wrong. Yeah, as a well-judged cannon, figured that he could avoid potting the black, so purposefully electing to knock it over the high of the middle pocket and just try and set up some shot for the corner. So, good clearance again. Two in a row now. The referee Terry Billiam just getting things ready for frame three. Is it me or has is, is Terry got a bit of um, the the guy that does the uh, the matchroom stuff? Is it John John Layman? Oh yes, yes bit, I know. Him. Yes, they the, the, the guys the same barbers, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> bit of John Layman about him. Yeah, he's, John has picked up a bit of a cult following from some of those recent matchroom events. Mm. Very distinctive style of announcing the players and the scores. Yeah. Oh dear. Well, that uh, is the chance that Clint was looking for. Cue ball. Well, it was tracking towards that top corner pocket. It didn't go in initially and then got kicked in by one of the balls following it, as can so often happen. Yeah, it's definitely the chance Clint wanted. Getting 3 0 behind wouldn't have been very helpful. He's well aware how quickly Sean can pile the pressure on. Clint's one of those players that sticks in it, though. He's already had some good comebacks this weekend, so I don't think he'll be afraid to get behind. He's probably the more sort of tenacious of the two of climbing back into a match, so I think he'll be okay with this position. Yeah, he was 3 1, three one down yesterday against Declan, and uh, the whole match turned on its head. So. so that's okay. This, that's the one time in World Rules when that's not a foul when it's an open table after the break. And nominate yellows. Yeah, so still would have had a choice of colours, but you heard the referee announce the choice of the yellows. And these yellows, absolutely perfect now. Couldn't ask for a better opportunity for your first clearance of the match. Very neat and tidy player, Clint. Very sort of precise, well-defined cue action. He always have confidence. He's in full control of what he's doing. I think uh, that's Clint's family we just spotted there, just at the end of the table. I believe that's his. Um, I believe that's his dad, Jimmy, and um, that's his little sister. I'm sure the camera will pan round and pick them up again in, in a few moments. Nice clearance. Good standard of play so far. Three good clearances. This is what we'd have expected of these two players. Sometimes, though, pressure of a final, it doesn't quite work out like that. Next match in the Ladies' Champions League semi final, table 11, Amy Beecham, Leanne Craig. Leanne Craig, Amy Beecham, table 11. Sean just mopping his brow as he sits in his chair. Good start to the match, but annoying enough in that last frame. 
Yeah, just on the left there. Pretty sure that's Clint's dad, Jimmy, and um, the other little one. That's Clint's little sister. Yeah, this is a more sociable time to be holding the match from a family perspective than yeah. midnight last night, which was the other option. So Clint back to the front ball break. That looks pretty good. Wow. That is very effective. Using a carbon fiber brake cue, switch back to his regular playing cue now. I think if uh, the red that's just above the eight ball passes between the gap of the, the other two reds, I think he will probably take that as his first ball. Yeah, these are very, sitting very nicely indeed. No two balls anywhere near each other. It's a case of manoeuvring the white ball around. Yeah, probably doesn't go through the gap, so he can take that to right centre, just drop this in as his opening ball. So no problem with the balls at this end of the table. So at some point you're going to have to transition up to the top of the table. Fortunately, they're sitting quite easily because... There's no ball in the middle of the table that's a perfect transition, but it still should be easy enough to land on. Yeah, I think he's going to go up there now. He's going to leave this red to the left of the eight ball as um, his final ball. Just needed to make sure there he finished uh, straight or just low. Couldn't, didn't want to finish high. No, just that gap between the yellows pretty nicely. He's got options here for how much angle he wants to leave on the last ball. Yeah, fairly natural. You can just drift this cue ball straight down the centre line of the table. Finish probably somewhere round, round about the, what would be the blue spot. Absolutely fine. Easy angle to get around for the black. And just like that, 2 0 becomes 2 each. And just that one dry break from Sean Chipperfield. Sorry, the in off, should I say, from Sean Chipperfield costing him two frames. And uh, Clint back on level terms. Yeah, that's how quickly it can turn around after the first two frames. It looked like one-way traffic to the man on the left of the arena. But that in-off, as you say, has invited Clint back to the table. Nothing to choose between the players after the first four. So we have uh, the other games from the Jason Owen Open. And uh, Scott Gillespie, Josh Kane on a decider and uh, Josh Kane is at the table with just a, a few balls a few balls left and uh, going about a clearance that he probably should be making one tricky shot remaining by the look of it Scott Pope uh, the young man from the West Country is having a really good weekend he's already beaten Neil Raybone and uh, this morning beaten Jake McCartney on his way to now playing Alex Lewis and he's currently 2-0 up against Alex and just about to make it 3-0 another West Countryman having a decent weekend is Oli Bell so we will keep an eye on those scores and that will be played down to a final today and we will watch that final later on on this very channel yeah Oli's having a good run beat Gareth Hibbert last night he's one of the form players in the Jason Owen Open Clint, uh, Clint Anson also in, in the quarterfinal of um, that Chase and Owen Open. He will 
await the winner of the Josh Keane Scott Gillespie game. So when he finishes this one, he's still got more action to come. Uh, Oli Ben, incidentally, playing Steve Petty. I, just, I fancy Steve Petty to have a good weekend this weekend, and uh, I'm not sure why. I think he turned up. I think my understanding is that he's he's recently got a table at home, or he's always had a table at home, but just started practicing on it. I'm not not quite sure, but. I know that he's been putting in some table time. Turned up this weekend with his um, with his father. So I just thought somehow he was going to have a deep run. And uh, he finds himself 3-1 up in the quarter final against Oli Bell. And the other game there is Don Cooney against Aaron Davis. Stacked up with, um, with talent. Yeah, it's hard to pick a winner from that list. Yeah, Steve Pett is one of those guys you, you don't see for a while, but whenever you do see him at a tournament, he always looks to be in good form. He seems to take a bit of a break periodically, but then comes back ready for it. And Scott Pope has won that third frame, and he now leads Alex Lewis three frames to nil. He's a young man that really is making some, some waves in the game at the moment. He's having deep runs in a lot of events. We saw him yesterday on stream. Um, he... Uh, had lots and lots of chances against Sean Chipperfield and could argue, arguably have won the game quite easily. But, um, Chippy made a comeback and, uh, well, the rest is history, as they say. Because here he is in the final. Yeah, this match has really turned that one in off from Sean. Suddenly everything started going wrong since then. Quite come out as planned though. High tariff shot attempted by Clint to open up that last red. Still got a pot, but needs to find a way of dropping behind this ball to maybe take it along to the top right hand corner or open it up somehow. Quite thin that shot, and the cue ball was always going to be flying around, so having to control that. A bit disappointed to have let that one slip because the momentum was all his size up until that point. And Sean, under no pressure to go for these, he has all the time in the world. But, um, Sean being Sean, he's looking for the route. He's looking to attack. Yeah, as you rightly say, at World Rules, not everyone would be going for that. Like, it might have been some upside in trying to get the two visits from a position it would have been easy to tie up your opponent. But at the same time, you never really want to let somebody back to the table. Things can go wrong, so if they're there, this is always the safest option. Yeah, there's just never a, never a thought of um, defence in his mind. Just looking for the out. If it's there, he's going to take them on. If he can get through, if, if he can see enough of this ball to put it to the bottom left-hand corner, then this was absolutely the right, yeah, and he can. This was absolutely the right thing, because they were all there. No point leaving the opportunity for the table to get worse. So, after a brief hiatus of a couple of frames, it looks like normal service is resumed. It's living up to its billing as a quick fire match as well so far. He looks relaxed. He really does. He just looks in the groove. Looks in command. Looks like a man on a mission. Yeah, he never looks like a guy that's under much pressure, although I, I think, as you were saying at the beginning, he hasn't he's got very close to winning a lot of titles this season, hasn't quite converted, so I think he will be pretty focused on getting the trophy for this one. Yeah, if somehow he lets this one get away, then I think uh, on the drive home today, he really will start feeling the frustration of, um, I mean, you can look back on a, a fantastic season, but, you know, as, as, as good as it gets, you still want to be... You still want to be lifting trophies. You still want to be winning the uh, the silverware. But, uh, he's always very pragmatic, 
but I know that it will be starting to play on his mind a little. Yeah, I mean, I guess the good thing from his point of view is he's won some big titles in the past, former world champion, of course, so it's not like he's struggling to get over the line for the first time, but yeah. it just feels like he's been knocking the door so much this season. Yeah. This break is really working for Clint. The man from Beeston in Nottinghamshire. Yeah, he's making the break look pretty easy today. He's not finding it quite so easy in some of his previous matches, but generally does have a very good break. And yellow balls, his choice. Slightly more measured approach than his opponent, although that could probably be said about pretty much anyone that pays, Sean. These yellow balls sitting pretty nice. A bit disappointed he didn't get a slightly fuller cannon on the yellow, but I think he's he's okay. He's um he can drop in behind that yellow. He may even be able to get across to it now from the ball towards the bottom left, although the red on the cushion may just be in the way of that. If he gets right behind it, I think he's, I think he's fine. And uh, while he's got the ball near the um, near the top right pocket, he doesn't really need to do too much with the cue ball. So he just needs to land on that straight and he can just drop it in. And he's got the recovery ball at the top of the table. Although he's given it a bit of thought. Yeah, I think he probably ideally wants to leave that ball to the top right until last to get on the black. But yeah. it, it's going to be hard because that ball that's to the right of the cue ball now would be a very tight cut into the middle pocket. If he was to try and drop it in, he wouldn't be able to play much position. I think this would be straightforward if the yellow um, closest to the bulk line passed into left centre because he could, he could then use that as his last ball. But uh, I don't think it does. So still a little work to be done. Yeah, so I'm going to go about it a slightly different way from the one that might have seemed like the obvious route. The way he's played this suggests that he's going to take the one on the right-hand side cushion long down to the bottom right-hand corner at some stage. So Scott Pope has completed a 5-0 victory over Alex Lewis and he will play Steve Petty in the semi-final. Um, Don Cooney 3-1 up against Aaron Davis and he awaits the winner of Clint Ianson against Josh Kane. So this, um, this day could go on for a good few hours yet because we've still got a couple of rounds to get through that quarter-final match to catch up for Clint after this game. Yeah, it's always the way if one player goes deep in both tournaments. It's a bit of a scheduling nightmare for the organisers. This is uh, pretty tough now. And even more so. I think uh, all he's left himself is a double. Actually, it might work in his favour because he... He can, um, if he gets it, the cue ball, he can screw back through the gap to somewhere around about the bulk line to leave himself on the on the eight ball. Sean just looking at the angle of the double to see whether he fancies it. Yeah, it's always tricky picking out the angle from this position. Okay. I think it, it made it more difficult because he had to kind of soft screw it. You want to punch those a little harder, but he had to soft screw because he had to control the cue ball through that gap. So that just made it a little trickier. I was just got the sense he wasn't completely happy with the route. He spent quite a lot of time in the middle of that clearance thinking about it. There were a few different options, none of which were perfect. I don't think he was ever 100% sure that he'd got a route in mind.
Could be an important frame there, difference between three all and four two. It's not plain sailing though, is it? He, he needs to do something with these reds at the top of the table. I think he's going to be looking for an angle. Yeah, so he, does he pot one and develop the other or does he try and land on both? So he could play this and I think he's just got the line to be able to screw behind the other ball. Yeah, just like so. Doesn't want to be on the cushion and too straight though because he's going to struggle to get out. So he may be forced now. I think he's got a tiny angle, but he may just be forced to drop this in and play the red that's near the bulk line into the, the left centre. Oh, or just top it through and play it to right centre. Yeah, more difficult shot that if you've if you had some angle on that last shot and could just have punched out. Should still be okay though. All about this shot now. This one needs to be timed. Yeah, top pros make these shots look very easy, but they're not. You've really got to judge them right. He needs to get the cue ball, yeah, and get the cue ball a couple inches off the cushion to leave an angle to float up for the eight ball. But has he finished fairly straight here? If he has, this still could be really difficult. If he's off angle either way, he's fine, because if he's just to the left, he can top it through. Yeah, just top it through off the cushion. Yeah, he's mm. off angle slightly the wrong way, though, isn't he? he? Is, yeah. It's going to be hard to get the white... Over far above the middle pocket. White tracks across to that to that centre, so having to cut it and go up and down twice, and he's missed the ball. Yeah, that's a disappointing miss. He'd done all the hard work in that frame, but just didn't quite land right on that red. If he'd have been just slightly straighter or had the other angle, it would have been easy to push the white three for the black but just didn't quite have the right angle to take it to the corner which is why he was forced into that shot real let off for Clint having let Sean back to the table he'd have been fearing the worst well that's another one that could have gone wrong so the um, the middle pocket was in the um, in the way of the natural angle to come one to come one cushion and then uh, up the left hand side of the table so he screwed it around off of three cushions but flick the red on the way through and it, any thicker contact and he wouldn't have had a shot on the eight ball so he's just had a touch of luck there and he holds his hand up to acknowledge that piece of luck to Sean yeah and although the score is tied at three apiece I think it'll be Clint that's considerably happier with that score line because Sean's always been the one that's been ahead or has had the opportunity to go ahead Clint's been kind of just hanging on in there and sometimes when you let somebody hang on in there, they grow in confidence and can build up a head of steam. Good quality match for the most part, though. A couple of slight errors in that frame, but otherwise it's been pretty clinical stuff from both players. Not sure that was the best break. The contact just didn't look perfect, but a ball has gone in. Yeah, and he's, he does, even though it's, everything's pretty close together, I think he does have choice of, um, of yeah, yellow or red. I think the yellow passes, but equally, I think the, the outside red pots as well. So I think ideally you want to be yellows here, just dictated by the fact that you've got the yellow in front of the, the red on that top cushion. Yeah, it would be much easier to open the yellow up than it would to open the red up. Yeah. And you've got the natural ball in the middle of bulk to be able to to develop that as well. So it's just whether he's got the opener. I'm not sure he's got... I'm not sure the yellow he's closest to goes. Next match on table 14, semi-final of Lady Champions League. Harriet Haynes, Sharon Lynch. Harriet Haynes, Sharon Lynch, table 14. Well, it's obviously a tough choice between them because he's going to get yeah, some thought. Look at, looking at reds. So if he does this, he's going to need to open up the top left-hand corner pocket. Could potentially use the red that's in the middle of the table, play that off the yellow to open things up. Yeah, but it's gone, gone wrong already, that flick. Trying to trying to flick the, the pack to just, just open things up, but it's it's gone even more awkward now. I 
think he can get through to the one close to the, the cushion, but that's pretty awkward. Wow. Oh, how what well has he hit that? Almost perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Those shots are so hard to have got as close as he did was With pretty ha remarkable. Hampered queuing as well. That's just fantastic. Never touched the cushion. So Clint alive to the prospect of that pocket being opened up is quickly taking steps to get it locked down. Yeah, and the yellow is still tied up between these two reds. I think Sean can maybe open up his red, maybe try and double it back down to the bottom left pocket now. Yeah, screw across to, yeah, he's, that's what he tried to do. He's played a little two in one shot there. Just tried to screw across to put his ball over the pocket, ever looking for a way to attack, even though he's got balls tied up. Look to play the, um, the the double long and also send the cue ball across. So didn't make either, but still has. Well, um, the problem is now he's also just flicked the um, the yellow. So the yellow now pots the one between this triangle of reds at the bottom. I think that passes to bottom right if he can find a ball to land on it. Yeah, so you can see it does pass into a couple of pockets. Yeah. He's on it. Run couple of inches further down the table ideally but he's still got a shot the position that's going to be more difficult now and if he can dig into it I think he can dig into it with side and well oh, that is a big angle so he's gonna it looks like he's gonna have to dig in and screw around off of two cushions and try and get back out into open plate maybe screw the cue ball off the red, use the red next to the yellow. Yeah, yeah, but that would have been an easier shot if it was a slightly fuller contact on the red. Mm -hmm. Half ball like that, it was always going to be hard to get enough work on the cue ball. So both players now have, in their last shot, got themselves into a bit of trouble. Possibly only left with a double to top corner, but this is even more difficult than the, the previous double he had. I think he has to go for it though. There was nowhere safe on the table. That was the problem. Well, for a moment, it looked like Sean opening the balls up uh, proved costly, but actually it's worked to his advantage because now it's him coming to the table with a pretty presentable opportunity. And this is an opportunity he really needs to take. I think if he was to have lost this frame, he'd have been starting to worry that the match was slipping away from him, having got off to such a good start. But now... Just chance to get ahead again. The eight ball's in an awkward place here. He nudges it out of the way and uh, he leaves himself on this red, but he's very close to it. Doesn't need to do much, he can just dab it in and uh, stun the cue ball across the table. Yeah, that's pretty much all he need needed to do and should be fine from here. Red to top left and then take the plants on. May take the plant now, but uh, I suppose all he needs to, I, I like that, just nudge, nudge the eight ball a bit further away, just because it only really went into one pocket, so it just gives himself a choice, what he doesn't want, and you could see him playing that with great care, he didn't want to pop both balls with one shot there, that would have been disaster, as you can see where the cue balls landed, and that's why he's played it so gently. Yeah, he played that well because he was also playing with a lot of side to try and make sure he didn't sneak behind the yellow, so I had to judge it. It's not quite into that one, though. It's, uh, well, it's in no man's land. Yeah, it's often the way, isn't it? He's, he's played the difficult shots well, and then one of the easier positional shots, he's left himself short. Oh, good recovery. Nice pop. Retakes the lead. Four frames to three in favour of Sean Jebberfield. What a great game this is so far. It's got twists and turns. It's... Uh, there's nothing better in a game of pool than you see the odd missed ball and a bit of drama. Really is fantastic. That's what we that's what we love seeing. It's great to see that uh, they are 
humans after all. They make mistakes, the pressure builds up. As always, please do um, like the stream. We've got uh, a great number of viewers on YouTube and Facebook now. Um, just a, a quick thumbs up where you've got a second while the, the referee's setting up the balls on YouTube. The thun, thumbs up there just at the bottom of the screen. If you could just click that and give us a, give us a like. Give us a like on uh, Facebook as well. And if you get the chance, please do share the stream. Really uh, does help us and increases our exposure. Thank you very much for your help. See people furiously clicking that like button, which is great news. And uh, Clint Anson, wow, how, how close was that cue ball to finding its way up into that top left pocket? But sometimes the luck's with you and sometimes it's not. Yeah, and from a neutral's point of view, a lot of people will be willing Clint on, keep this match on level terms. Sean went too ahead at the beginning, but since then it's been nip and tuck between the players. I know we haven't had much in the way of the comments, but um, just to let people know, that, um, if, your, if your picture is a little bit grainy, then you are able to um, to change that. I know people have been tuning in over the weekend and they may have heard me say before, but just in case you haven't, if the, the picture's just a, a bit grainy for you, then um, it's because uh, YouTube have defaulted everything to a really low setting. So we're broadcasting in 1080. So just go into um, your settings. I think it's in the, there's three dots at the top right of the screen. If you click on that, and it's, I think it says quality and then advanced, and you can ch change it to the highest setting, which should be 1080, and that will um, improve the, the resolution, and you should get a crystal clear picture. Just so if people are quietly suffering, watching a, a bit of a grainy image, that's, uh, that's exactly why. And if you're cursing us for it, it's, it's you, not us, is what we're trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's YouTube, not any of us, it's, maybe. It's within your gift to change things. Paul and the team have worked very hard to bring high quality pictures all weekend so it is possible to get the highest quality resolution if you just follow those steps that Nick has mentioned Best English school asking if uh, any of the players do this full time some do not not many, it's, it is increasing there's a, there's a few players that um, only play pool um, for a living that, that number has increased gradually over the last year or so and I think uh, it will continue to increase as there's added value, added prize money and bigger prize pools on the way and the, re the competition really is hotting up between the different factions in pool so um, I think there will come a time where players um, do have the luxury of just being able to play pool for a living but yeah it's all possibly you know five years ago there was probably only one or two players but that, uh, that has increased and will con continue to do so. So the eight ball so, um, looks like he's left the, the perfect angle just to come off the side cushion. Just above the eight. Just holds his hand up, urging it to slow down, but this is perfect. He wanted to be very close behind it because you can see it is very tight and if you're playing that from a wide angle these are easy to, to, to misjudge but when you're right behind them they're pretty much unmissable great stuff from Clint yeah another good break and another good clearance he's been pretty clinical off his own break so far which has been important because he's breaking second and has often found himself a frame behind coming to the table so at the halfway point Eight of the 15 frames played. So nothing to choose between the players still. Four on each side of the scoreboard. Sean pensively chalking his cue as the referee racks up the balls for frame nine. And thanks very much for to Johnny Spinks, who's just uh, said that the um, if you hover your mouse over the screen, then there's a settings cog button, uh, button on the... Uh, bottom right four along and if you press the cog you can set the screen resolution to 1080 so I know people have been suffering this weekend but it, it, Facebook um, have 
defaulted everything to the lowest setting just simply because um, so many people have been using YouTube through lockdown and it is uh, plaguing a lot of people. So people think that, oh, what rubbish picture quality, but actually it's just, uh, it's just in the settings. So Sean Chipperfield then to break off in frame nine. Big break. Three balls potted, two reds and a yellow. Even though it has been a, a big break, it's actually not a completely perfect outcome. As you can see, two balls tied up on the left-hand side. If you do ever have any technical issues, you can you can normally tell whether it's your end or our end um, because if the chat box is if there's a problem with the sound or the vision or anything like that, then you've normally if it, if it's at our end, you've normally got about 50 people telling us, and if, if you're the only person that's saying that there's a there's an issue with it, it's probably at your end rather than ours. Um, That's how, <laughs> that's pretty much how we judge things anyway. So not what Sean was looking for. I think he was going for a finish there. Other players you would say probably would have just played to cover that pocket. Clint's got to be a bit careful here because these reds are actually relatively open, even though it looks like there's a couple tied up on the left-hand side. I think Sean went reds, figuring that he could double the top of those balls. Well, that's a that's a pretty bad outcome from Clint. That wasn't what he wanted to do at all. He's tried to tie things up, and he's actually done exactly the opposite. He's opened the reds up nicely and turned the table back over. So... Pretty presentable opportunity this for Sean. Two easy reds at the top of the table. Drift the cue ball down the middle for the remaining three balls at the bottom. So it looks like the pattern of the match will be continuing with Sean just getting ahead by the smallest of margins. But Clint well, will be up to break next. If you think of uh, if you think of yesterday's match. I think it was Clint against Declan. The only time that Clint was ahead in the entire match was when he potted the final, the final eight ball. And uh, I think uh, Chippy's been ahead all the way in this one, hasn't he? I don't think. Yeah, two ahead and then yeah. a single frame ahead a few times. But it's, it's only the the winning frame that counts, as they say. It's it's an old cliche, but so true. Yeah, this one's got all the hallmarks of potentially going to a deciding frame. Clint's break has been very good, which has helped him every time Chippy has got ahead stepped up to break and more often than not he's cleared up from that position so he's done what he could he's cleared from his break albeit he did take one extra visit it wasn't directly from the break covered the pocket first and then Clint slightly misjudged his first shot to invite Sean back to the table just look at it Sean there in the chair it's a it's a different body language he's presenting to something that he was presenting a few years ago. He did say that he's worked on his his mental attitude and if you watch back matches from four or five years ago, he sometimes just his body language was sat down. Look at him there, he's he's leant forward, he's poised, he's ready to go, he's ready to jump up and and uh, and attack the table. He just looks um, he just looks a different character now. And he, he has said a few times that he's been working on his um on his on the mental side of his game and uh, I think it's noticeable from some of his Facebook posts he said that you know it was a match that he was in trouble and a couple of years ago he would have lost that match but he's dug in and uh, 
yeah, I think it's testament to him. I'd like say the whole body language is, is different. He looks a different person, different character. He's unquestionably toughened up as a match player. He used to have a very all or nothing style. The all was absolutely devastating and he'd frequently win based on that, but maybe didn't have quite so much of a B game on days when things go weren't going well. But now he's happy to dig into a match. Generally not to the point of slowing a match down and playing more tactically, but as you say, a more positive mental attitude, even if he goes a few behind, still plays to the same standard. So one of each ball potted off the break, and yet again, pretty good break from Clint. Yeah, that red and yellow towards the top left pocket causes a problem causes a problem really whichever ball you go for so that's something he's going to have to deal with fairly soon he's going to have to develop that ball and he doesn't want to leave it until too late so interesting to see what his plan is here Yeah, he doesn't seem unduly troubled by it, does he? He's obviously got a plan. Well, I, I think, I think his plan would have been. I think his plan would have been to finish with the cue ball lower than it was now, pop the one in the middle, and then stun up the side cushion into the into the red and the yellow. But he's finished too straight on the one to the middle, and I think that's why you saw that smile on his face, because he, he knows that it's a, a little bit of his positional play that's let him down so far. I'm pretty sure that that was what he was targeting. So if the cue ball finishes five inches lower than it is now, he's got an angle now. He can play this with a lot of left-hand side to get across there. And he needs to kind of nudge the red on the, on the left-hand side. So he needs to play it firm as well to make sure that the yellow releases to side cushion and top cushion. If he hits a full ball or on the right hand side, this is no good. That looks perfect. What a great cannon. That yeah, really is. come out much better. Yeah, it? that's a top no. shot. Obviously trusting to like a bit where the red ended up. He wasn't playing precisely that, but he's, he's hit it well. So it looks like the pattern is going to continue. Sean goes one ahead. If he can just negotiate this red, which is well, left a bit tougher than he wanted. Yeah, this is a tester. This is a tester. And uh, can't do a great deal with the cue ball. Can't let the cue ball run too far. So he needs to play this in a controlled manner. And he's going to leave a thinner cut on the eight ball, which shouldn't be a problem. It's all about this pot. Yeah, for me, he doesn't want to get too ambitious with the position here. Just concentrate on potting this ball. Yep. Mm. Has he got lucky? Maybe. Just a touch of luck there. With the red ball going across the yellow. We saw that in the deciding frame yesterday when Clint had a um, was forced into playing a, um, an inventive attacking shot, which uh, could have gone disastrously wrong against... That was the game against Phil Harrison, I think, wasn't it? And um, ended up putting the uh, ended up putting one of his balls on top of one of Phil's, which ultimately won in the frame. Could that still make a difference in this frame with that yellow? I think uh, Sean would like to try and find a telling snooker from here, but. There's not many places on the table that you can place it without it being a, a one cushion escape. So it's a loose positional shot from Clint that led to that mistake. It looked like he'd done all the hard work and it was a fairly innocuous shot. He ended up messing up position onto his last red. This is a bonus opportunity for Sean, although it's not perfect, it's better to be at the table. For once, though, he is looking at safety options. Even he isn't fancying going for the dish from here. So just look at where he might want to put the cue ball. Just um, 
incidentally, someone mentioning there on, on the chat box, I noticed that uh, suggesting this is a an EPA organised event, just a, a correction there, that this is actually an independent, uh, independently run event. The organiser, Neil Toms, is uh, very much independent and uh, used to be um, the forerunner of this, used to be... Uh, EPA led. So well, Sean considered at length a potential safety shot, decided he couldn't find one he liked, <laughs> and has <laughs> resorted to the thing he loves best, which is potting a few balls. Looking to leave an angle. So pot this one to top corner and leave an angle on the, well, either one of those. Probably the nearest of the, the two yellows. Oh, going for the top one. Yeah, you can understand why actually, because if he knocks it out from behind full ball, he should be left with the yellow below into right centre. So doesn't need to do too much. He just needs to nudge it out. So he's going to play this in a controlled manner. He's gone around it. So now, hmm, I think he may be forced to Play some kind of snooker, is he? I mean, is there a... Can he play a shot to nothing? Can he... Well, I was going to say, could he double it? How annoying to go through that gap. Yeah. When you see it from the overhead, you realise just how small the gap was to go through. It's a bad judgement, actually. That's a, that's a poor error at his level. You think um, he should should be nudging that yellow. Yeah, he was playing for a fuller contact on it. So he's had to do something which... Doesn't come very naturally to him. Tie the ball up. It's quite clever as well, I think, because he's just left an edge, so that's not a total snooker. So Clint can't uh, contrive something just to kind of roll in behind it. He's going to have to. Mm, well, same again from Sean. Maybe just nudge the yellow towards the red to take away, try and take away the one cushion escape. Yeah, he's going to decide how close he wants it. He may not want to get it too close because it then becomes his problem. So I'm getting the other way. Just making sure he didn't leave a pot knowing that Clint's going to have to play a shot and potentially move the red. Yeah, I quite like that. That's, that's clever. It's good thinking. It shows a good knowledge of the rules as well. It just means that yeah, you can see Clint acknowledging that just by the his body language. Sean knows that it has to move the red and has to move it far enough to be able to hit a cushion as well. So it's almost certainly going to open this pocket. Yeah, it's all about not leaving a shot on the yellow when he plays there. May try and flick off of it and send the cue ball one, two, three times across the table to try and get in behind the eight ball. But that's a that's a tough shot. Would be a frame winner though, if he gets it. I don't really see what, what else he can do here. But while he's thinking about it, again, just uh, one last push. If you could please um, give us a like, give us a thumbs up on YouTube. I mean, if you're enjoying your viewing, if you haven't already done so, please. It uh, supports our stream and uh, increases our exposure. And also a big shout out to all of the sponsors who make this event possible. You can see their banners around the arena. Um, you'll also see their names in between the frames on their adverts. To uh, Jason Owen, who has been key in the success and sponsorship of this event. It's not far away, that really is. That's a brilliant effort. And um, the one thing he has done is separation. He's got a lot of space between the cue ball and the object ball. And even if he can pot this ball in open play, how does he get across for the yellow on the left side cushion? And trying to take that yellow, first of all, on the left is treacherous because if he misses it, then... Uh, 
that's frame over because the red is sat there waiting. So he has to play this first, and this is tough. Oh, what a shot. Oh, that's a phenomenal Sorry, that's just, that's just ridiculous. He's just got down, barely looked at it, just knocked it in like it's one over the pocket. I think almost helped by the fact it was just an all or nothing shot. There was no real shot to nothing element, just had to pot it. Kept his mind completely clear. So a frame that could have gone either way and one that's quite significant in the context of the scoreline. Sean Chipperfield now ahead by two frames for the second time in this match. He leads by six frames to four. We see again, what a beautiful pot. Not just the pot, but the position as well. Sean's just stepped out of the arena for a bathroom break. We'll be back with more commentary when he returns. So, Sean back in the arena and breaking off in frame 11. And he'll be pretty happy with the way that last frame went. Now ahead by two frames again. He'll also be pretty happy with how that break went. Two yellow balls potted. This is going to be a key frame for Clint. If Sean wins this, he's going to be one away from victory. And that's going to be a tough task to rein him back from. So Sean will know the importance of completing this clearance. I can tell you that uh, Scott Pope and Steve Petty, the semi-final of the Jason Owen, is underway. And they're currently tied up at two frames each. Uh, Steve Petty's at the table. He's just 
next to this table on table two. Still got a shot, obviously, at this yellow in the middle pocket. Not quite the angle that he wanted to, so I to just give a bit of thought to rerouting. Yeah, his problem's the, the ball on the right-hand side more than these. The two reds on the left cushion are right in the way of uh, the path he wants to take. This would just be such a great frame to win if he can go 7-4. Oh, huge. Huge. Yeah, this is absolutely the keys to the safe here because Clint would need to win four frames to one. Sorry, four frames to nil, what I'm saying. And without over-dramatising it, by contrast, if he was to somehow lose this frame, be Clint breaking next, he could potentially be coming to the table six all, so... There's a lot riding on this. He's played a pretty good position of shot there, managed to negotiate the traffic and leave himself an angle to drift over. He's just going to have to leave himself at some kind of shot on this last yellow, either a double or drop behind it. I think take your medicine. Oh. <laughs> mm. yeah, I don't know about that. That always looked like the risk you could push it past the middle pocket. I, I just I don't know why he moved it. I mean, I really don't. You had a, a lovely angle just to come up, take your medicine, drop on it, back yourself to put it up the rail. I, I, and I fancy him to get it all day long. And, wow. That could be a very big judgment Huge in the moment. context of the match. Huge moment. I mean, to be fair, it's the kind of, if it had come out over the middle pocket, we would have been saying that's a great shot. But there was always the risk of just pushing it a little bit too far. Just don't take the chance, just drop on it straight up the cushion and drop it in. So Clint content to bide his time. Knowing that he left the white over that side, even if Sean can see the right-hand edge, that's obviously no good to him at all. I think um, I think he's got a line here. Play this just below the left centre with right-hand side. I think it just shades. Oh. Yeah, not a million miles away. Very close, but look what he's turned over now. Yeah. Had to play it at pace, although that may have looked a bit reckless. There was no point just dropping it in dead weight because he wouldn't have been on the black, which is why he played it at that pace. Well, what a huge moment that was, that decision to try and move that last red rather than try and land on it. That's probably, barring any disasters, going to cost him the frame. And uh, we were just talking about the contrast between seven frames to four and six frames to five because of course Sean would have been breaking in the next frame as well you can see just behind Clint there that's his girlfriend Shannon often see uh, her in his corner supporting him Been so many times in this frame, uh, in this match, Sean gets ahead, but then Clint seems to find a way back into it. Looks like he's going to find a way back to just one frame behind. And it will be starting to weigh on Sean a bit if he does see his opponent clear up here. as you would always expect him to he's a warrior and uh, he's fighting and still very much in this match taking advantage of 
the mistakes that are presented to him. Again, one last ask, if you could please give the, the, the um, stream the thumbs up. Just see that thumbs up at the bottom of your screen and uh, give us a like if you're watching on Facebook. Great viewing figures on this Sunday, um, but also if you do get a chance to share the stream across your Facebook timeline, then that would help us and get more people. I'm sure you have people within your Facebook friends who would love to be watching the conclusion of this match. What a great game it's been, a fitting finale to a wonderful season of pool. We've seen Declan Brennan, Tom Cousins, Jack Whelan, and who's our other winner? Should be obvious. Who's our fourth winner? We have Tom Cousins, Declan, and uh, Jack Whelan. I was out of the country. I wasn't, wasn't even in, <laughs> in Europe. I'm, I'm pleading ignorance to this question. Oh, Arfan, of course. Arfan Dab won the last event here a couple of weeks ago. How could that slip my mind? Apologies, Arfan. So those have been our four winners so far, and uh, who will join them in that role of honour? So having pulled it back to within one frame, it was Clint's breaking this 12th frame, so opportunity to level things up at six apiece if he can complete a clearance here. Something you don't see very often, Clint having to call for the spider because he couldn't reach this ball the way it's hampered by the red. <laughs> I don't think anyone ever likes playing with a spider, and particularly on a pool table rather than a sneaker table because the cue ball's smaller so you can see even less of it. Very honourable there from Clint yeah. declaring that he'd yeah. fouled the ball on the way through. Absolutely. It. Yeah, what great sportsmanship and I think you could you could hear it as well in the um in the contact. You could hear a double hit. And uh Clint said, I think I fouled and the referee agreed. And that could be a, a very significant moment because the balls are pretty open. We're just discussing it. Sean, amazing sportsmanship from him as well, saying, uh, would you like to watch it back? Just taking a moment to, to get a replay so that we can check whether that was definitely a foul. It did certainly sound like one. I think the sound gave it away more than, uh, more than the, the vision.
yeah, so I thought, uh, I was under the impression that Clint had called a foul and the referee had called a foul because of the, the, double, the double sound. You could tell there was definitely a double sound. And I think uh, Clint thought he'd caught the, the red on the way through, but you could clearly see from that angle that uh, he hadn't caught the red. The red didn't move, and we think that the clicking noise must have been um, the feral on the, um, on the uh, spider. So the decision is uh, no foul. Tremendous sportsmanship by yeah, both players. I couldn't call the foul on himself, and then Sean refusing to take it until it yeah. had been checked. And uh, I mean, I'm sure everyone in the chat box will have their own opinion on what they think it should be, but ultimately, it's the referee who will make the decision, and he made the right decision. So it's a. Uh, Bit of a moot point, really. He gets the benefit of the slow motion replay. Yeah, and it would have been a, a sad way for Clint to have lost the frame. Could have been a very major moment in the context of the match, potentially the difference between 7 5 and 6 4, uh, 6 all. Sometimes it's not that easy composing yourself after moments like that but Clint. I have to say I immediately called foul, I thought it was a foul because I, it was a double noise Yeah, we all did actually, Paul, Paul, Paul said exactly the same thing but it, you know when you look at the benefit, we have that benefit of the slow motion replay which is really useful because you could see that it couldn't possibly be a, a foul because the red didn't move yeah, Paul did a, a good job there capturing that footage Normally he's fast asleep in the chair and he would have missed it, but uh, luckily for us, he was actually alert this time. Well, that's a pretty good shot from Clint, although it's not finished perfectly. He has at least got the two balls out. Well, I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> He's, um, I don't think that yellow passes, uh, it doesn't, you can see there, it doesn't pass past the, the eight ball. And um, No, he's going to have to double. He's going to have to play a double, one. and that's a tough double. That really is. That could have come out much nicer for him. And uh, <laughs> you look back on the on the game and you wonder who deserves the luck here because um, it was great sportsmanship from both. Uh, Chippy could have just said, OK, fair enough, and carried on, but he was the, the person who questioned it and said, actually, was it? Was it a foul after all? Do you want to check it? So that was brilliant. Yeah, they both want to win the right way. It's not just about the result. Great sportsmanship. And a good shot there from Clint. Played a tricky double very well. Back in good position now. So... Could have been Sean Chipfield on the hill a frame ago, but now it looks like it's going six all. Well, it almost seems fitting that it should have reached six all. It's a match where Sean has really struggled to get further than a frame or two ahead. He's got ahead by two frames twice, but couldn't quite get that third frame. Clint Ianson, it's just been a masterclass in staying in there. 
pull out some good clearances frequently from one or two frames behind. Just done what he needed to. So from starting out at a best of 15 match, we're now playing a best of three for the final tour title of the season. Oh, oh wow, that cue ball, so close. There's still some d discussion rattling on about whether that was a foul or not a foul, or whether you should hear it or see it or whatever. I'm a bit flabbergasted at how the conversation is still going on. We arrived at the right decision in the right way, and that's all that matters. I don't think uh, it needs any further discussion, really. No, it's out of Sean's mind. The thing that's on his mind right now is how he goes about clearing up these balls because he really wants to get on the hill first. He's not been behind in this match. The last thing he wants is to fall behind at this moment. You were saying a moment ago that the only time Clint Ianson was ahead in his semi-final was when he potted the final black. It could so easily be the same tale in this match. First man to eight lifts this title, so a little bit of breathing room, but rapidly running out of space. From a neutral's point of view, you would kind of like to see the decider, wouldn't you? I think the bookmakers before this match had Clint Ianson as a slight favourite. Just looking on the overhead to see whether the red pass is a yellow, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't, so I think that's why his chippies tried to land pretty straight on this one, so he can just top it through and play. Yeah, that ice, oh, and he's just tried to steal some of the pocket there. He's tried to steal the pocket just to make sure the cue ball gets down and stays on that side of the table, but wow. Yeah, loading the cue ball, that was spin to try and make that angle, but it's just pushed it into the jaw. Clint obviously delighted to be back at the table, although not the most appealing position he's currently facing. So I'm just looking at the other action, Scott Pope uh, is 4-3 up against Steve Petty in the semi-final. The other semi-final, well, they're still waiting for um, Clint Hansen against Josh Kane, which is a game that will follow this one. Um, Aaron Davis beat Dom Cooney, so he waits in the other semi-final for the winner of Clint and Josh. So although there are four reds on the table, it's actually quite a good wall to play a snooker behind. I think he's left an edge of one of them, but the main priority was just not to leave anything easy for Sean. I think Sean's going to be going after this. So how does it come out? It's not the worst. It's no, that's not too bad. He's obviously got a pot to the bottom left. He's then got another one that goes to the bottom right. And we'll just need to find a route through to the, the ball that's nearest the black, which may pop to the right, left, centre. I think it pops to left, centre and bottom right. I think um, it's just a case of holding on to the cue ball here. And, uh, well, that just shows you that may have just been a, a little bit of a sloppy safety from Clint. does indeed pass. Yeah, he's lucky it pops bottom right. That made the position much easier. So, yeah, that, it looked like Clint had a big margin for error with that safety, but as it turned out... Still has to navigate this positional shot, though, to get onto the eight. And he does. He leaves a big pocket to the middle as well. Wow. What a moment. So as we've seen so many times in this match, Sean just nudges ahead. This time by one frame. Clint Ianson has faced this equation time after time as he stepped up to break got to win the remaining two frames to lift this title already obviously a much better final than his first one of the season when he lost 8-0 to, to, to Jack Whelan but right now he's not thinking about respectability, he's thinking about lifting this title
14, please the break, the sound file is fetched by inspectors. So a huge moment. Clint Hansen as he steps up to break frame number 14. Wow, I just thought for a second that something was going to find its way into that top right pocket. Look at this table. It's um, it's a bit ordinary. Is the only way I can describe it. There's, wow, if the yellow on the bulk line goes to right corner, then I'm pretty sure he's going to be going for yellows here because... The only problem he's got is the one that's just next to the eight ball. Uh, everything else pops somewhere. And uh, if that ball doesn't go, he can develop it now. So come on. Well, uh, he must go. He's not tried to clip it out. So it's all about this ball next to the eight because everything else has a pocket and then it's just about cue ball control. So he needs a cannon on the red just above that yellow and he'll leave it into the pocket, to the same pocket. Simple stuff, but uh, never that simple to execute. So, all about the cue ball. Everything's there for him. What a desperate moment for Clint to have come up with a dry break. He's broken so well in this match and cleared up from several of his own breaks. Just needed to do it one more time. And his break deserted him at completely the wrong moment. I think Sean would love to be able to work his way up the table so play this one next to the eight ball now and if he can feed the cue ball through the gap between eight ball and red next to it and take the the yellow to the right corner leave the one to the left corner and then work his way back up the table leaving the one on the bulk line as his ball to get onto the eight this is perfect so far it's going to be the transition between the ball that he's aiming at now to get out to the middle of the table for the one in the centre table. Just needs to hold his nerve. Yeah, great opportunity this for the match. Would really like to get it done. It'll be his break in the decider, but the last thing he wants is to go through wow. to a decider. He's going to have to judge one more because he's going to have to screw this off two cushions. There's no way out on the don't believe there's any way out on the left hand side of the table he can't get enough side onto it so he's gonna have to screw it around oh he could he could just get through that gap that's i won't say it's perfect but it's, it's okay just to probably touch too much angle on the one to middle so go top corner next two more balls oh and he's landed perfectly on this this is all over wow what a moment for sean chipfield I have to say I'm very pleased for him. That really is good. That's going to mean a lot to him. And uh, hats off for, to Clint. He's made two finals this season and he will be back in the winner's circle again. But what a performance. Another great weekend from Clint, for, uh, Clint Ianson. But it's Sean Chipperfield that walks away with the spoils. What a moment for him. Celebrating with his friends. He is absolutely over the moon. Should we go down and, uh, and hear from him and get his opinions and his thoughts? I'll leave uh, Mark with you for a second just to sum up that match. Mark, what a what a great game. Yeah, what can you say about that? Great performance from Sean. He really didn't have it easy. After two frames, it looked like he might run away with it, but then let Clint in, and after that, it was nip and tuck the whole way through. And at the end, he had to hold himself together well. Once he'd got pegged back to six all, you could have worried that that was going to be difficult to get over the line for him, particularly as he's had a, a few close matches this season towards the business end of tournaments where he hasn't quite got it done. Very fitting end to the season, though. He's played so well this season. Spare a thought, though, for Clint Ianson, who's also been one of the form players of the season and has played so well this weekend. He's come through some very difficult matches to this point. Let's throw down to Nick to have a word.
Next match is Jason Owen on table two, Tim Pants and Josh Gaines, this is Josh table two. Sean, we've sat here a few times this season and um, we've said that you've been the nearly man, you've been knocking on the door, it's the old cliches, but now the door's open. Sum up what you think. I don't know, I'm lost for words really. Um, I feel quite emotional. Um, yeah, I have been knocking on the door recently, a lot. I've, I'm fed up with that saying. Yeah. You know, so everyone just keeps saying it to me, it will eventually break open and obviously it has now. And, I don't know, just overcome with relief, I think, more than anything. Yeah. But I'm obviously so happy to have to be on that winner's circle again. I know I've said it a number of times while I've been watching you that um, you just keep keep getting so close. And um, and I knew if you got to the end of the season without lift, lifting some kind of silverware, you could reflect on a really positive season. But without lifting that trophy, what what's it all worth, you know? Yeah. I mean, you can't expect to win tournaments because so many good players about. And, you know, I've lost, I think I lost two finals... Um, on this tour and I've, I've lost other finals and semis so I know I'm there but you, you, you just feel like you're going to walk into someone who's just going to play well break better and yeah. you're done with you know you still have, need a lot of luck to win these and that's gone my way this weekend but, I mean just just talk us through that game you were you, you were ahead all the way through it but I mean yeah. my god Clint's a fighter isn't he just such a great opponent yeah he is yeah um, yeah I, I weren't behind at all in the match I think I made a mistake early on I think I missed two chances and that was it in the whole match and I think any more than that you're going to lose. Um, the, the chance at 6-4 took, took me off the clearance to be honest because I, kind of, I half played for the double first and then realised it didn't really go past, <laughs> past the middle, past the other yellow um, and then I was too short on the yellow so I messed that up and I thought come on you know. Um, but to be fair when I do make a mistake and I, I do lose that frame and then you break dishes I tend to put it out of my mind pretty quick you yeah. know whereas before sometimes things go against you yeah. you think negative but luckily I'll stay positive and good stuff happened I said exactly the same on commentary that um, it, it, it's all about just keep going keep taking your chances keep making the right moves and, it, and it's going to happen for you and, and you've changed around your mental attitude so much that, and I think I've seen on social media a few times where you say you know I was in a situation there where a couple of years ago I'd have lost that match um, so yeah. it really is testament to the work that you've done on your mental attitude as well as the work you do on the Definitely. table. Definitely, that was the match against Callum last night. It was so dry breaks everywhere, not just me, but for him as well. And when they're nip and tuck, I would generally lose them games, yeah. you know, years gone by. But like I said, I've said to you before, I've got a different frame of mind now, much more positive. And yeah, you know, things are happening. So long may it continue. Yeah, mate, I'm absolutely made up for you. Honestly, I'm, I'm so Cheers. glad to see you in the winner's circle. Nice one. Well done. And um, we've got Mike Perkins who's going to come in and present the trophy. Thanks very much, Mike. And uh, your winner of event five, the grand finale, is Sean Shipperfield. Cheers, Perky. Well nice one. <laughs> well done, mate. Cheers. Congratulations. Well done to Sean. We've still got action coming over this weekend. We're still going to bring you the final from the Jason Owen Open. We're still going to bring you the final from the ladies. So stick around and watch that action. But for now, he's the main man. It's great to see him in the winner's circle. See you soon.